First, let's pay homage to the lineage gurus. Homage to the venerable Mang Liao Ming. Homage to Master Sakya Zheng Kong. Homage to the His Holiness Sixteen Kamapa. Homage to Master Dufton Tarji. Homage to the three jewels of the altar. Homage to the mediator of Homa today. Magic Labdron. And all the Dakinis. Sumo, Tanzan Gatso, all Dhamma Masters, Dhamma Educators, Dhamma Teachers, Dhamma Lecturers, Dhamma Assistants, Directors of Temples and Chapters, and all disciples present here over the internet. And our participating VIPs today are uh, the rep from Taipei Mission to Norway and Sweden, Ambassador Tung Zhou Liao's wife, Dama Sister Judy. And from Canada, Dr. Olivia and her husband. And Dr. Wei from New York. And the owner of Shanghai House Restaurant, Miss Liu Yi Hong. And from Taiwan, the IG Enterprise. Special assistant to the president of the company, the my brother Gu, and Dr. Ryan Zhuang and man and his wife. Good afternoon, everyone. How do you do? Thank you for coming, everybody. Thank you for coming. We have so many people. That's because Magic Lab Drawn is here. How do you do? Greeting in Cantonese. For next Sunday, December 1st, December 1st, Sunday at 3 p.m., it's Manjushri Homa Fire Offering Ceremony. And he's one of the eight great bodhisattvas, and he occupies the first place in all the bodhisattvas, of all the bodhisattvas. So he symbolizes a wisdom, and this deity is extremely important. <laughs> this is very important. If you don't want any wisdom, then you don't have to come, and you don't have to register yourself as the primary supplicants. But if you need wisdom, or yourself or your children, because the Dharma lineage for wisdom is first and foremost. 
we all know of the six parameters or the six perfections of bodhisattvahood. One of them is wisdom and wisdom and meditation, meditative stability. And this meditative stability relies on wisdom. And by having wisdom, it can generate meditation. And in meditation, you would be able to generate wisdom. So it's mutual. So of all the Dharma practices, the six perfection of Bodhisattvahood, it's all for the wisdom. They are all for the wisdom. So in our Buddhist studies, the most important is to study the wisdom of the Buddha, the wisdom of the Tathagata. So all the body, speech and mind of all the Bodhisattvas the wisdom of all Tathagata's body, speech, and mind is Manjushri Bodhisattva. The symbol of all the wisdoms of all Tathagata's body, speech, and mind is Manjushri Bodhisattva. So the three reliances in Tantrayana, the three deities that you can rely on are Manjushri Bodhisattva, the wisdom deity, Avalokiteswara Bodhisattva, the compassionate deity, and Vajrapani Bodhisattva, the Dharma power deity. Those are the three reliances. Therefore, Manjushri Bodhisattva is extremely important. Many Tathagatas have attainments, attain Buddhahood because of Manjushri Bodhisattva. Many Tathagatas so Manjushri Bodhisattva is the leader, the first and foremost of all Bodhisattvas. So Manjushri Bodhisattva can allow or make uh, uh, the attainments of the Tathagatas of Buddha. So therefore this deity is extremely important. That's the end of the announcement of the ad. So just now, Magic Labdron and the Black Wrathful Dakini descended, both descended. When we formed the mudra, they descended. This Thangka here, I went to the Homa fire pit and to open the fire pit and to set ceremonial demarcation. I saw the magic labron tanka. This tanka is extremely dignified and beautiful. She's holding a damaru made of human skin in her right hand, and her left hand is holding a vajra bell. And she's standing in a dancing posture to appear as magic labdron. She looks extremely dignified. This tanka looks very nice. And the mudra, so it's the same mudra as Golden Mother and many of the Dakinis, the same mudra and the mantra. And she has the black 
wrathful Dakini too, and just now the black wrathful Dakini also descended. <coughs> in Taiwan, in my study above my desk, there's a tanka of the black wrathful Dakini. And in Seattle, America, in my room, there are two tankas of magic lab drawn. Two magic lab drawn tankas. They're all very beautiful and dignified. I highly admire magic lab drawn's uh, cutting practice. And Magic Labron belong is the founder of the chart tradition. And some is some translated it as the Shichiba school. So it's like taking off clothes because magic lab drawn is naked. So that's a transliteration in Chinese. So people translate it into different words. They're all the same in Chinese. So she's a founder. She's a head lineage guru. So she and Padampa Sangi, which is the Tibetan name for Bodhidharma, and Padampa Sangi was also the f the head for the leaping practice. So what is the the leaping practice in order to have attainments. So directly, with the direct pointing to the mind, imme immediately or suddenly you attain Buddhahood. That's the sudden enlightenment. And the other one is the gradual enlightenment. You follow the step-by-step step in the development stage, and ultimately you understand Buddha nature, and you confirm and prove the Buddha nature. That's the gradual enlightenment or attainment. And the other one was the sudden attainment. And for Bodhidharma, his the Dharma teaching that he gave in China was the leaping practice or the sudden attainment, which is also Zen Buddhism. So Padampa Sangi is the Tibetan name of Bodhidharma. And he transmitted it to Magic Labdra. She relied on many gurus, not just one guru. Like Sonam Lama was also a guru who granted empowerment upon her. And the other one was also her spiritual companion, Mahasiddha from India. And what is most important or the most famous about her is the cutting practice and then her self-sacrifice practice. So you start with charity or giving. I mentioned something here. The first goal is giving. 
in the self-sacrifice practice, you give your body, you sacrifice your body and give it away. Once you give it away, it doesn't exist anymore. And the cutting practice, what it means, Last night, I also mentioned about one thing. If you are able to uh, not be blown by the eight winds of the world, and you have no envy, no jealousy, and you can e even cut off your desire. It's actually difficult to cut off your desire, but there is one method. What method is it? I didn't say it yesterday. So what method can you use to stop your desire? So, any thoughts? Please raise your hands. Regard yourself as being dead. Not me, not, not, that's not what I thought. I'm just talking about desire. So what methods can you use to stop your desire? Master Lian Ci? No, that's not what I'm thinking. What you were saying was were right, but that's not what I'm thinking now. The best way to cut off your desire is to be really sick. Once you're really sick, you're in a, on a sick bed in the hospital, in ICU, then what desire would you have? That's a method, that's one method. You're really sick and you feel very weak. You're so skinny. And can barely breathe. I mean, have no energy. What desire would you have? Maybe just one desire. I just want to feel better, to feel well, to be cured. That's it. You don't want anything else, right? So if you are really, really sick in the ICU, what desire would you have? Do you still care about your reputation? And with tubes all over your body, and you have your de dignity. I am a director, a president, uh, the leader of the nation. But do you still care about that name? No. Do you still care about the, about the money? Do you still want money? No. You're already so skinny with tubes all over. Do you still want money? Do you still want woman? You can't get it up anymore. What woman would you want? So, money, woman, name, you don't want any. You just want to get better. Once you recover and gain your yourself back, then you start to want more money, name, and woman or sex. Right? Yes. Yeah. 
When you're really sick, you can say that you have no desire anymore. But there are some people who's really sick and he's already half conscious. But when the nurse came by, he still extend, extended his hand and touched her butt. So he's really incorrigible. He's already really sick, but his habits is still there. He still extended his hand. I went to see a patient, and he was totally naked, and only with a piece of cloth on him. So we give him a red envelope, and immediately he took the red envelope, and so his family was about to to take care of the red envelope for him, and he said no, and he wanted to place it inside his wallet, but then he realized that he was actually naked, he had no place to hide it, to place it, and still he wanted to hide it under his bed, not wanting anybody else to take it. So there are still people like that who still want money even at that stage. But most people, when they are really sick, they let go of everything. They don't think of anything anymore. And just now what the two were saying was also okay. Once you're dead, nothing exists. So magic Labdon's cutting practice is to visualize when you die, to change your physical body to become Ambrosia or Amrita, and to make it as an offering to the four holy realms and the six mundane realms, the ten Dharma realms. So as a spiritual cultivator, we often mindful of death. So this cutting practice is to remind us of death. And you should always be mindful that you are dead already, although you're still living now, but your mindset should be thinking that you're dead already. Once you're dead already, do you still have desire? Of course not. None whatsoever. Because you're dead already. Why do you still want to be elected if you're dead already? No need. Because you will not become the leader of the nation, or the legislator, or ministers, or directors, or whatever. You don't need to become any of them. You're dead already. So the desire for name, title, and position is gone. And desire for benefits will also be gone, because you are often thinking that you're dead already. The bills, the money in the world has no use anymore. No more. So desire for benefits is gone too, because you're dead already. And of course your desire for sensual pleasure is also gone. So this is the cutting practice of magic lab drawn to let you generate to let you eliminate all your desire, to eradicate all afflictions, and everything return to emptiness. And being dead is to practice the selflessness or the state of no self. Once you're dead, how can you still be jealous? 
So if you often practice this, ultimately, there is no more jealousy, no more envy, because you have no more thoughts, none. No more extraneous thoughts. Do you still have afflictions, worries, and troubles? No more. If earthquakes is here, but you're dead already, there's no need to be worried. Actually, by practicing this, at the end, you would feel like if there's fire around your house, there's no need to be panic because you're dead already. And when the fire reaches your house, there's no need to get nervous because the house did not belong, belong to me anyway. The world did, does not belong to me. The house, the cars, all the wealth don't belong to me. It's so it's good that I don't have to go to the crematorium to be cremated. I can just be cremated inside my own house. There's no need to be panic. So by practicing this practice, if your wife runs away with another man, it's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Why? Because she's also not my eternal wife, it's not my wife forever. If she doesn't die first, I would die first. So that's why there's this statement, the man is in heaven, his money is in the bank, his wife is at somebody, some other man's chest, and the siblings are fighting for your money. But that's good too. For me, it doesn't matter. If that, were had, that had been me, it's fine. I, I'm in heaven already. That is the most important thing. But if you go to hell, your money is also in the bank. And his, and his wife is at some another man's chest and your siblings are fighting for your inheritance, then that would truly a sad story. That would be pitiful. So the meaning of the cutting practice is to cut off all afflictions. There's nothing to worry about. Yesterday I said, Everything is the best arrangement. Once you have mastered the cutting practice, then you would know that everything is the best arrangement. Today, if the house uh, came down because there's an earthquake, it's fine if you die in it because I was dead already. It's fine. Doesn't matter. I don't care. I don't care. That is a joke. Or die. Tonon do sura. All die. And many companions together. The same with fire, earthquake. Was if I am, <laughs> if I drowned uh, in the ocean, I know how to swim. But if I die drowning, that's fine too. Perhaps I would become the son-in-law of the dragon king in the ocean. That's how it is. Then this kind of realm is called the realm of no self. So at this time, you just let it be, which is what I talked about yesterday. I was trying to explain this, just letting it be. Oh. 
I couldn't explain it well yesterday. But there's one thing. Like if you go see a movie, you go to the movie theater, the movie started, and you follow uh, you follow the the story, and if the movie makes you laugh, you laugh. The movie makes you cry, and you cry. So a movie can make you laugh and cry. And at the end, the end. <laughs> you say hen? That's. Oh, so Sumo is still smarter than all of you. That's why she's the Sumo. Why did you just say that? You said Han, but Sumo is smarter. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't want to learn English. <laughs> it's just too much. There are two ways to pronounce T H E, <laughs> but I only knew once. One. Okay, okay. It is <laughs> so it's the end of the movie. <laughs> Once the movie ends, so what just happened to you, laughing and crying? So your heart and your mind is inside the movie? Then you're merging with it. But if you're just following the storyline, then it's the pr a process of the meditation. And at the end, when you cut it, because it has ended, then the movie is the movie, and you are you. Then you just return to your original nature. So according to Lamdi's letting it be, is that you can follow the storyline of the movie, and you laugh and you cry, it's fine. But at the end, when it ends, you would wake up and realize, I am still I, and I'm not affected by the movie. I'm still me. I'm not affected by the movie. And this is called letting it be. Like following my will. So when the movie plays, then you are one with the movie. You laugh and cry with it. But when the movie ends, you return to your original Buddha nature. That's how it is. So in Lamde, it often talks about this um, letting it be at will. 
so you can go with the flow, but you maintain your clarity and lucidity. So you know that you're watching a movie, it's not real. It's the same with human life, with our life. The Dharma of Ishi Chokal, which to be transmitted in February, said, I see that this human world, I see that there is nothing real in this human world. There are no real things in this human world. She said, I see that there are no real things in this human world. This statement made me contemplate and ponder upon it for many days. Why did she say that? Because the human world and the human life is just a movie. It's not real. You think the physical body is real? You have a strong ego. I am real. I want something. Actually, your body is not yours. It's just a composition. And it's unreal. It's fake. There is nothing real, real about it. You would know when you age. You want to see things with your eyes. The eyes does not listen, do not listen to you anymore. You cannot see. And you have back pain and you can tell your back no pain. But it's still painful. When you have frozen shoulders, okay, raise your arm and you cannot. But Grandmaster still does not have any of that problems which people usually get in their 40s, frozen shoulders. Oh, in the 50s. It's just a term in Chinese. You have back pains in your 40s and frozen shoulders in the 50s. That's what the doctors say. Oh, when you say in the 50s, it's just a term. But any time when you cannot raise your arms, that means you have frozen shoulders, not only in the 50s, but any age. So your body doesn't belong to you. So if we ask you to run 100 meters now, can you run it in 11 seconds? I did that before when I was young. But now, can you? No. Impossible. There are many things that you cannot do anymore. So let me tell you, the parts that should be hard are not hard. And the parts that should not be hard got hard. So, if the body belongs to you, you cannot even command it, then is that real? If even your body is not real, how could anything else outside is real? No way. Recently, I often think of one thing. Simu's health is not so good, and because of that, I don't go back to Taiwan. Do you know? <laughs> I have a, a very secret treasure chest in Taiwan. A treasure trove that keep my secret things. I was worried about my things. Why? Because her health is not good, and Taiwan's air is not good, and in Taiwan, all the mosquitoes eat me. 
I must have owned the mosquitoes something karmically. As soon as I enter into a room, the mosquitoes always find me and sting me until I cry out. So Seattle is really heaven, no mosquitoes. So the mosquitoes always ring around that I cannot sleep well at night. And the air in Taizong is also not good. But I'm worried about that treasure trove. And only, <laughs> only, uh, only I know about it. Just me. <laughs> <laughs> so if I don't draw the the map to that treasure, nobody else would know. So if I don't go back this year, next year, and then one year, I will not be able to return there anymore. What should I do? But once you learn the cutting practice of magic lap drawn, you would know it doesn't matter. Whoever has the fortune would get it. I don't know whom, but whoever that has the fortune would get it. That's how we think. So now I don't care. So once you learn the cutting practice, then your mind and your heart are wide open. What is treasure? It's just fake stuff. Why do we call them fake stuff? Because it's not yours, you cannot use them. You don't get to use them. So what should you do then? Then you just let others use them. And you keep them for what? The antiques are for what? You don't sell them? What use is there keeping them? So in the future, if I go back, all those antiques, and I just use the baseball bat and crush them all. Might as well. Cut them all. Why are you thinking about those still? No more. We're, we're not thinking about the woman anymore either. So this cutting practice is really excellent. Once you cut it off, you cut off self or ego, afflictions, everything. Wealth, sex, name, everything completely, cleanly. Oh, you're selfish. <laughs> if that's what you thought. Amitabha. Today, we talk about Lande. Uh, to cut off the channel areas, divided into two, cutting off the channels of rebirth and cutting off the channels of uh, nirvana. Do you know, once you reach the highest state, that rebirth and nirvana are the same? If you're to be reborn, then you're reborn. You're one with the movie. If you enter into nirvana, you're just returning to your intrinsic original nature. That's what I say. So cutting off the channels of rebirth, it can eliminate the faults and pain of the channels. At the area where the channel are connected and to the areas where the knots are not opened yet by the qi, 
then there would be pain on the channels, like the wind to wind that brings knives, etc. And in practicing to increase the ambrosia, the pure ambrosia, the qi moves to all channels, like water flowing through a, a tight and uh, obstructed uh, areas, then wherever there's pain, you pay attention to that. And once you open the knots, then it is impossible not to generate the meditation of bliss and emptiness. And uh, by knowing the kinds of channels and the area of pain, like stated in the verse, the four rebirth channels and wheels or chakras, etc. It is uh, they are the six forms of the channels of the rebirth channels. It's like holding an umbrella. That's good, and it's like a. Like a coil of snakes, that's not so good. And then the, this is talking about the channels, and the most important one is the central channel, and then the left channel and the right channel, and then there are many more channels and chakras, like the channels at the brow chakra, at the throat chakra, at the heart chakra, at the navel chakra, at the secret chakra. And then at the ch channels that reach all parts of the body. And all together, they often say 72,000 channels. If the channels are knotted, then there would be pain. So, so you need to use the qi to open the channels to loosen and open the channels. I often say this. And you use inner fire to open the channels. You use the light drops to open the channels. You, there are only these three things, qi, vital energy, inner fire, tumu, and light drops, bindu. They are used to open the channels. There are many elderly who have joint problems, the knees, uh, they would uh, feel pain there because your light drops are gone. So the wheel and on the joints between the bones, there's no more. Uh, uh, moisturizer, lubricant, then you would feel pain. We have many doctors here. I'm not a doctor, but this is my simple theory. Because you have no more light drops, so there are no more lubricant. So when the bones move again, bones, then you would feel pain. Then your knees would be painful when you're old because your light drops is gone. So I said that last night, why you have problems with your brain or with your neural system? Because your light drops are gone. Why you have no more saliva? Because when you eat, you need the saliva. But why the saliva is dry up? Then if you have no more saliva, it would be difficult for you to eat or to speak. If you have no more insulin, that means the light drops is gone. Then you would get diabetes. So all parts of your body, the organs, have secretions, have light drops, including the brow chakra. And the light drops have many functions, including as the lubrication. 
So why you have pain here and pain there on your body, on the channels, because the channels is blocked, or it's not smooth, it's not straight, they're all knotted, of course then you have pain. So that's the theory, the concept inside our body, so that's why it's said, cutting off the channels of rebirth, so what it meant here is wherever there's pain, you practice to increase your pure abrusia, that's the nectar, and the qi together, moving inside all the channels until all channels are open and smooth. If it's not open, then it would be like water flowing through a block and narrow, tight pipes and blocks, so that's pain. The reason why we have strokes is because of this too, because your blood inside the blood vessels is blocked, then that becomes a heart attack. Heart attack. <laughs> See, even when you don't understand my English, you understand what I mean. So the blood returning to the heart is being blocked, then there would be heart attack or arteriosclerosis. So in Lamdi just now, it was mentioned too, if the blood is moving in the brain, but that uh, pipe or the channels is broken, then that would be brain hemorrhage. Or whichever channel is blocked, and the blood is being blocked, that's also a stroke. And this too would make you die qu quickly. Brain hemorrhage would uh, make you die very fast. And heart attack would make you die very fast. But the rest, you would be suffering before you die. It, it is best to die with brain hemorrhage or heart attack, that the heart stops beating, then you die quickly. That's what I wish, that I would just die of heart attack or brain hemorrhage. The other kinds of death would be lengthy and problematic, and that is considered to be a kind of affliction or worries. So my mom, in the past, when she prayed to Avalokiteswara Bodhisattva, after she finished chanting the Universal Gate Sutra, the only prayer, the only request or wish that she had is she prayed to Avalokiteswara Bodhisattva, please let me die quickly and cleanly. That's also a prayer, you know. That's what my mom prayed all the time. And she did die in three days. So her wish was fulfilled. And I now learned from my mom, when I die, when I go, I don't want anybody. Do you understand this Taiwanese? It's quite scary and pitiful if you die dragging. It's best if you just die quick and dry quick and clean. So now I pray to Magic Lab Drone so that I can die quickly and cleanly. So I don't want to 
to drag on in the hospitals. You know, some people just drag on and on for years. Oh my gosh, please, not me. So it's written in Lamde here. Wherever there is pain, you can use your qi, your light drops and inner fire to open it, to move it so that it's flowing again. Then the pain would be resolved. The pain and the ache will go away. When I was young, and uh, when I was 73, up till 73, I did not know what pain is all about. You know, I live until I was 73, and I did not even know or never encounter what pain is about. Only one time, I... Uh, suffered from cellulitis. How old was I then? Only then I knew what pain was all about. Before I had the cellulitis, I did not know what pain was all about. So the cellulitis was due to bacterial infection. I, I couldn't have been infected and the bacteria came in from some gaps in my nails and then it became cellulitis. It was really scary. So when you feel blockage in your channels, then you can use your mind to transport the qi to that area, to open it, then the pain will be gone. I have demonstrated to you last week, right? To move the qi to the teeth, that the teeth would move to the ears, the ears would move to the eyes, the eyes can then see the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, and the qi moves to the ears, you can hear the sound of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. And my chi can also circulate all over my body. Truly, my whole body can move. Master Lian Shi asked me to move all parts of my body. So you push down the upper chi, you lift up the lower chi. Then the whole body will move. Then you push down the upper chi, you lift up the lower chi, and then the two combine, that's Treasurevis Energy Yogi. And then I Treasurevis Energy Yoga, and then you utilize this chi, and then I transport it, move it to the area where there's pain. There's no need to explain this part. Six symptoms. The signs of the channels of rebirth, you would understand by reading them. Sometimes the channels are like open umbrella, like a coil snake, and like a ball of threads, like a long th thread, or, and like branches of a tree, or of like hair. And which types is good, which types are bad? Which the long thread is good, but branch of a tree is good, like hair is bad, like a ball of thread is bad, like a coil snake is bad. A beautiful girl asked the great master, my ex-boyfriend had a really ugly new girlfriend. Should I be happy? And the master replied wisely, he'd rather have an ugly woman and don't want you. So you should reflect upon yourself, right? 
He, he still prefer an ugly woman rather than being with the beautiful you. So you should think and reflect upon that. So the master is really wise. Uh, the day before yesterday, I went to the temple to get a divination, and it was bad. So I threw it up, threw it out, and then I kept getting another one and another one, another one until I got the good one. See, ha ha! It turns out that your faith is in your hands. There, someone from Hong Kong said, Grand Master, I don't want to come to Seattle anymore. And I asked why. And she said, I asked Golden Mother, Can I go to Seattle frequently? And it was said bad. So she told me she doesn't want to go to Seattle anymore because she asked Golden Mother if she can come to Seattle often and then the reply was bad. So I told her, why don't you get, get a few more? <laughs> then you, eventually you'll get the good one. So your own faith is uh, your faith is in your own hands. But that definition of golden mother is very accurate. It's true. This is a true story. A disciple from Hong Kong. She did try to get a divination from Golden Mother. If she can come to Seattle often, and she got the bad one. And I told her, just get a few more. I don't know if she listened to me or not. She hasn't been here for quite a long time. There's an elderly man on the bus the last row, and he was sleepy. And the bus brake all of a sudden. And he rolled all the way to the side, to the driver. And he opened his eyes and looked at the driver. And all the other passengers were about to argue, and yet this elderly man told the driver, Do you need anything from me? So we should learn from the spirit of this elderly man. doesn't matter what you encounter. You are still unruffled, and you still live on with grace. A lot of people say that the men are more playboyish, <laughs> right? So there's no scientific uh, background for that. And this joke says, in high school, the women, the girls love the handsome boys, and the boys love the beautiful girls. In college, the, the woman loves the considerate man, but the man still loves the beautiful Goals. At work, the woman loves the rich man, rich man, and the man still loves the beautiful ladies. So this proves that the playboy one is not the man, it's the woman. The man is says consistent. <laughs> you know why? 
very simple. When he is 20, he loves eight, the 18 one. When I was 40, I still like the 18 years old. But I'm not 80 yet. When I'm 80, when I'm, I was 70, I still like the 18 years old. See, a man is very f consistent. Very focused. Grandmaster still likes the 18 year old. It's 4.46 now. <laughs> so, liking the 18-year-old is fine. So, oh, money, pay me home.